The most skilled basketball player I ever seen is Kobe Bean Bryant. The guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. This dude was unbelievable, man. Because he could do everything. I think I told him one time, I said, bro, you could do everything I could do on the court, but you were 6'10". I had the athleticism, but the work ethic part, I had to get from being around him. And uh, he was a nightmare to go. He's the bar. He's who I got to come at and make a name for myself. I enjoy the show. So how old were you when you guys met? I think I was 18. Yeah, I was he was 19. 19. Right, because you're a year ahead. Yep. Yeah. You know, I stayed with him and his parents um, back when I was 18 years old. I just felt like he's been there, you know, in those, those shoes. And I felt like, what better person to learn from? This is all new to me than somebody that's already been through it. And, uh, you know, we became, we hit it off. All he did was watch these tapes, whether it was karate flicks, whether it was Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's we, right. We, we hung out together, <laughs> went to right. a spot. I was scared as hell because we ran into Mike Tyson. Like, <laughs> got stories. I have so many questions right now. He loves to play mind games, which is just oh, yeah. to test you, you know what I mean? So I learned that early. He likes to play mind games, and he always trying to get an edge on whoever, his opponents, whatever. I don't care if I'm his friend, whatever. Right. So, it's like, man, I, don't, I, I would never play pickup. It was uh, like, because how many reps you going to get playing pickup five, basketball? Five. I told him, I said, I'm about to go work out. And he was like, what are you going to work out for? You're in the off season. Like, you don't need to work out. So I go back to my room, change. Take it easy. Chill for a minute. I go to the weight room. <laughs> Who's in there? <laughs> this dude. <laughs> This dude, and I'm looking like, what? <laughs> this dude right here, so he's always gonna have an edge on somebody. He had a hard time understanding what sarcasm was. Right. I was just being sarcastic. That's what's up. How you been, man? Good, dog. Good. Doing good. Man, I know everybody's, you know, trying to figure out who's the best platter, man, Kobe. No, I just play, man. I, I really don't worry about that. I let the critics take care of that, and I just go out and play my game. Tracy's potential was off the charts. And for me, it was a time where I was getting a lot of flack for being a young player coming in the league. And I'm looking at another player coming out of high school. And I'm like, okay, we need to make noise. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to show these the old these guys, old guys mm -hmm. that we can come out of high school and do some serious damage. My, my first two, three season, I probably wouldn't have made it through those seasons if it wasn't for Kobe. My first year, I called him yeah. really, like, every week or right, it was a lot that I talked to him on the phone because I was going through it and I know he went through it his rookie season. He came in a year before me, same footsteps straight out of high school. And, you know, he, he went through some turbulent times in his rookie season and same with myself. I used to call and lean on him for advice. So I had somebody to lean on like, yo, man, you know, you come out of high school, you you know, you the man, you getting all the shots and then you come to an NBA team and you'll play one game probably 20 minutes and you don't see the floor for another five. Yeah. Like it was just inconsistent and I was being buried and I was like, it was, it was doing something to my confidence, yeah. right? So I had to lean on him at that time and we talked relentlessly. Yeah. I mean, he uh, went to Orlando. When he was with the Lakers. I got to Orlando. He was playing for the Lakers and, and playing for championships. His mindset was on winning championships. So our relationship went like this. And we were trying to win our championships in LA. So I absolutely buried myself even more so in the craft and literally cut everybody out of my life and just focused on that. We started, you know, he saw me coming up. That's what I mean. He kind of, you know, right. separated himself a little bit and I understood yeah. that. Like, I, I want to do the same. Yeah. I don't want to be friends with somebody that I'm really gunning for, you know what I mean? He was doing his thing, trying to win uh, championships. Hell, I'm just trying to be relevant and win scoring titles and do something with my team. And me over here, I'm, co I'm competing, trying to win scoring titles because I'm not competing for championships. <laughs> and I don't, I can't answer for him, but I was watching him from afar when I was in Orlando, especially the 2 3 season when I led the league in scoring. And this dude rung off like nine straight 40 points. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. I can't let him come get me for the scoring <laughs> title. I might not win a championship this year, but I'm damn sure getting this scoring title. Oh. But I remember in the playoffs, you guys were playing the Milwaukee Bucks mm -hmm. in one year. And me and Vanessa went out to lunch and went to a restaurant and they had TVs. The restaurant. I remember sitting there and watching. I mean, you just, just were cooking, baby. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in the restaurant watching that and telling V, I said, man, 
that dude's the real deal. He's made it. I mean, we started out like as youngest yeah. together, but I remember feeling like such a sense of joy because of what he was doing. So even though I've never actually told him that, it was a sense of pride. And that, that's as mushy as I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to get his best. There was no backing down. Like I, I knew I had to come and play against this dude every single possession. And it brought the best out of me. Because, you know, you play some of these guys, some nights, you know, you could drop 40 and you don't really have to go hard. With him, <laughs> yeah, you sleep on him <laughs> more too. <laughs> you get embarrassed. So, I mean, I, I loved, I relished those opportunities. I knew because he was older than I was, he came into the league before me. I knew I had to sharpen my skills and my one-on-one -on -one skills if I wanted to compete against him. This is the guy that I'm gunning for. He just brought the best out of me. That's just what it was. And I worked religiously of trying to get better. All of that stuff came from him, though. Like, us training together as, as young pups and, and seeing how he worked. And then watching him as he became this, you know, one of the greatest players to ever play the game, the footwork, right, how he approached the game. I took a couple of his moves. And I'm gonna sit here and say it, he don't have to. I know he took a couple of my moves. <laughs> he made me fall. He shook me so, he shook me so bad man. one time. I said, oh man. Yeah, but you embarrassed my whole team when he went down on the other end and then dumped on everybody and got a T for smacking the board. So you have told a story. That was like 98. I came in 97, so I, like I was 19 years old. Yeah. That the two of you on a trip to Germany. That was Paris. Where y'all played one-on-one, -on -one, supposedly in a yes. gym, and according to you, you won. He's, yeah, he's oh, I did win. He supposedly smoked. We didn't well, I play, did. We didn't play one-on-one. -on -one. We were over there, we took our trainers with us. We did play one-on-one. We, we, on one. we wasn't keeping score. What we were doing. Who wasn't keeping score? <laughs> right? So we were working on our footwork on the post. We were working out individually, and then we were working on our stuff on the post. We wasn't keeping score. We, just, right, we now, was playing. We, now, if somebody's playing a workout, and if the person scores, they keep the ball. What is that? We wasn't keeping score. When it first came out, I was in China, bro, and my Chinese partners was showing it to me like, uh, Kobe said he beat you 11 to 2. 11 to 3. <laughs> what? Say so he uh, demolished you or something like that. So I'm reading, I'm like, Hold up, so I called Cole, like, bro, what? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not you gonna pull a number out of thin air. You, you, I, I remember you, specifically. You can't believe the guy that doesn't even know the location where we were playing at. <laughs> he was like, yeah, man, you remember my trip to Paris? Uh, no, but he said Germany. He said, yeah, you remember my trip to Germany? I said, Cole, I, I'm playing. I was like, bro, I've never been to Germany with you. What are you talking about? Country, the trip. country may be off. <laughs> now, I may forget a lot of things. You forgot where we played. One at. thing I'm not going to forget is the score. It wasn't level three. Oh, it was. It's OK, though. No, it wasn't. It's all right, man. You had an off day. Okay. You don't have proof of the 11 to 3 <laughs> We don't believe you. We need see. more people. <laughs> you and Tracy played together five times. You've won them all. You know what? It's fun. It's a challenge. I love challenges, as I'm sure he does. And uh, I think it's what people like to see. I came out early to say hi to Ty Lu, I think it was, and you know, they were telling me, oh, Max ready for you, Max, Max ready for the game. And I remember reading about you having some tightness in your back. I said, yeah. And I said, yeah, how's his back? <laughs> oh, so he's ready for you. I said, he's gonna be fine when I hit him in that <laughs> <laughs> I was cooking in the first half of this game. I had like 21 in the first half. I, I came up, I uh, got a rebound. And Kobe jumped up behind me and I thought he came down with this elbow on my back. He jumped up behind me, and I swear I got an elbow <laughs> on my back. I wasn't 100% sure. It was on purpose, right? You were like, oh, purpose. maybe. But I'm looking at that video, absolutely. Look at that. Yeah, that's purpose. on purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably and I had did. and I had a contusion, <laughs> I was out. Damn. I just wanted to test the back out, see how, see how healthy it is. But I missed the next game because I was hurt. This is one of your good friends. <laughs> So these two guys, yep. now that you're sitting here, look back on all of this. Is there anything you'd tell these guys before we go? Yeah, in this day and age, we should try to figure out a way to trade and play with each other. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> For real. Like, That's yeah, what we should have done. We should have been talking about that at that age right there. Man, how can yeah. we get on the same team? Yeah, that would have been fun. <laughs> I actually could have signed with the Lakers back in, I think it was 2004, 2005, take less money and go join Kobe and Shaq. I always wish if I had one player to play with, it was this guy. It wasn't like that back then. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't guys 
you know, being the, the franchise player going and join other guys, you didn't sacrifice like that back then. That just wasn't the culture of the NBA. Man, listen, he could do everything I could do, but he was taller. You would have liked that too. When I talk to kids about that, I'll, that's what I tell them. They ask about the hardest player I ever had to defend. I say, it's, it's pretty easy when I was tracing because he could do everything I could do. Was there ever a conversation where you told Kobe, I'm not coming? Did no, that ever happen? No, no. Kobe wasn't recruiting anybody back then. <laughs> no. Are you serious? <laughs> But once we both retired, we started reconnecting, you know, having tournaments at the same place, texting and talking often, right? So I, I, our bond is coming back. You know, that connection, uh, just reconnecting with him and bringing back those old memories. Yeah, I remember we went to Disneyland and uh, somebody was afraid of roller coasters. It wasn't that I was afraid, Lisa, we just had lunch. <laughs> And this man trying to drag me on a roller coaster. I told him, like, bro, what? Was it, was it maybe? <laughs> but you couldn't see after. It's him doing that after I straight up <laughs> messed my whole day up. I was so mad at he him. He was, too. he was, he was not the same the rest of the day. Wouldn't talk to me.